I've just begun the recording on iCloud. So, Harrison. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending. Hopefully, you're getting some sleep at night and not staying up all night waiting for the returns. <laughs> it has been a long, drawn out election, and it's not over. Um, let's see. First item on the agenda for today is uh, approval of the minutes of October 1st. So move. Second. No questions, no corrections, no whatever. Okay. Yeah, motion to approve, please. Motion. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Let's see, reports. Uh, Health Department, Jen. Okay, so um, as expected, the cases um, are still rising this week. Um, with that being said, myself, Kevin, and Dr. Lutze have been working um, with Physician One testing company to bring them in. They are coming tomorrow to the high school in Sachs to do testing of roughly 600 staff and students. Wow. Next Friday, they will be doing um, residents. The link will be sent out in the out call, hopefully tomorrow night, if we can get that squared away. I still have some logistics to work on. I'm meeting the testing company tomorrow there. Um, and again, the whole goal of this is to really get a hold on what exactly we have positivity wise, identify those that are asymptomatic, positive and isolate and you know keep going. I'm also have been playing phone tag with the community health center that I've already met with about um, setting up mobile testing um, at the vulnerable population of the, sorry, the schoolhouse apartments and Millport um, because Community Health Center is a federally qualified health center. Um, they um, can only do vulnerable population. They can't come in and do the rest of my town. That would just be too easy for me. So um, I'm working on finalizing that to have those two complexes because it's congregate living and they're vulnerable, um, tested on site. The mobile team comes on site. So hoping to nail that down sometime um, next week for the future date. Um, I also have um, the, we had the first uh, ticket training with the state police and DECD and DPH. Um, the next ticket training is tomorrow that Kevin and I and PD will be on. And that is for, um, the fines, how that's going to work, liquor control is going to be on it as well. I've already ordered our ticket book because um, as many of you sure should know, tomorrow the governor's rolling is back to what he's calling phase 2.1. And what that is, is restaurants go back to 50% capacity and they have to close by 9.30 p.m. Um, only curbside and delivery is allowed after that. And the, the point of that is there's been, you know, you know, bars masquerading as restaurants statewide. Um, so that's their hope is by closing at 930 to kind of eliminate some of that behavior. Our restaurants have been pretty good. Chris is still working with them every day on retrofitting their interiors, making sure the tables are six feet apart. If they're not six feet apart, that they have their barricades in place. A plexiglass and stuff like that every single day he's been working with them on that so we're making good headway there the restaurant relicensing has been sent out and that's due in december so we'll see where we're at with that the grant that i wrote for the public health nurse um, was already approved we went through the interview process and um, hired someone she will be beginning on Monday, she is an RN with the vocational high schools as a floating RN. So she's very experienced dealing with the schools and everything. And I've already even received the full lump sum payment of the first year money for the grant because it's fully wow. funded by the grant. It's not paid by town. So the grant is already here, approved, money's in. So that's good news. On the other fronts of non-COVID, the health department deals with, um, septic plan review, we were up in 82% year over year in comparison to last year. Septic permits are up 65%. Soil testing's up 133%. Well permits are up 200%. And building permit plan reviews for properties on septic are up 20%. So on top of us, you know, getting this COVID, you know, pandemic, we're also on the other end because of the real estate 
um, seeing significant, huge increases in all that workload. So the public health nurse can't get here fast enough for me and very looking forward to having her in our happy little house. Um, the first year of the grant, which the, the grant goes weird with DPH, it goes May to May. So we're actually like catching up. So it goes up to next May. Um, she will be able to do up to 20, 21 hours a week, which is three full days. Um, after that, it will go down to only 14 hours, two days a week, but still I'll gladly take what I can get because, you know, as this continues to ramp up and I'm dealing not only with the public schools, but I'm dealing with all the private schools as well and all the businesses in town, you know, the more hands on, the on the grant. When does, when does she start? On Monday, November 9th. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. So that's the quick and uh, dirty update. But yeah, as you can see, the, not just the COVID, everything else is significantly increasing. And with the septic, just so for those that aren't aware, the soil testing, the plan review and all that usually means it's gonna translate later to another a building permit that I'm gonna to have to do. That's why the building permit, even though it's only up 20% for us right now, that's gonna explode because they generally do the septic soil testing and plan review for a future pool addition, new construction, knocking down a house, demo permit, et cetera. Jen, could I ask a question about the phys physician one testing? What yes. type of test, how long does it take to get the result and how reliable are the results on that type of test? It's a PCR test, so that's the gold standard. The results are roughly 36 to 48 hours. So for instance, tomorrow with Brian's testing, we are supposed to get it sometime around two o'clock on Sunday. So basically there's no Sunday fun day for me. It will be me and Brian dealing with the results on Sunday in preparation for Monday. And um, it's uh, tomorrow Brian's um, paying for it for the school. Going forward, we've figured out a way with the charge card to be $90 a test, which is the cheapest we could find anywhere. I've called multiple companies. Usually they're ranging anywhere you know, from 200 plus. You know, so it's getting a little crazy. We also have a side testing thing that we're trying to work out um, with uh, Russ and Waveney for maintenance purposes. We just want to get the mass testing, the bulk out of the way. And while we work out the details yeah. of the Waveney yeah. proposal. So the school, if there are 700 tests and $90 each, that's a lot of money. That. Yep. Yes. But, it, but again, there's FEMA reimbursement, um, CARES Act, there's other things. And without testing, it's going to be impossible to try to keep things open yeah, longer. Well spent, but it's just, it's not uh, trivial, not chump change, is it? No, no and th that's the problem. And these, all these companies that we're calling, you know, with the 200, 250, some 1,500, um, the problem is a lot of the insurance companies are not paying for it because it's asymptomatic testing. But you right. need the asymptomatic testing because you've got to catch them before they're full blown, you know, um, spreading. So it, it's this, but I also reached out to the governor's office last night because on the governor's call, it was mentioned that there's free testing available for communities. So far, that's only made its way to the cities. It has not made its way to the New Canaan's, the Darian's, the Whitlands of the world. So I emailed the governor's office directly to that person and copied Kevin on it, um, trying to advocate to bring that down to New Canaan for the obvious reasons. You know, none of us are made of money. So, <laughs> and where did all the federal money go at the state level? So. A hey, question, Jen. I heard that the Darien High School is gonna close down because of a rampant uh, run up in COVID because we are kind of peak by jowl with, Dave, uh, with Darianne. Are we talking to the town of Darianne and other places in Fairfield <coughs> County on a going basis, trying to get this money from Hartford down here? Yeah, I talked to the Darianne health director. I mean, this goes all the way back to August that I was reaching out to um, leaders about need, the need for a regional mass testing site like they used to have back in New Haven, back in June. So, I mean, even Senator Haskell and some of those were copied on those emails of, you know, with the schools and 
the reason why most of the schools have been closing is they need to do that for contact tracing purposes where, you know, me and uh, Brian Janitz and the, their team, Sarah, the school nurses, you know, we literally work all night long and all weekend long doing the tracing, getting the seating charts, getting the bus cameras, getting all that stuff, you know, so we could identify, isolate, but keep the schools functioning. And again, with all the mitigation measures in place, we're not seeing the transmission from student to student in the classroom. It's what happens outside the classrooms that's yeah. happening. Well, that's my concern with Darianne because I don't know whether we're playing football and all those kinds of other sports with them or not, but there are a number of social sports that take place outside the school system that uh, mix the two towns. Anyway. So with the thanks. sports, the governor is supposed to be releasing something tomorrow. We don't know what it is because the club sports and those sports, you know, are of concern um, for quarantine purposes. Because if there's one kid right. testing positive on one team, they quarantine both teams. Is kind of the way the guidance has been going from DPH. So we'll see what the governor says tomorrow to be continued on that front. Well, Jen, I really believe you guys working seven days a week has kept the schools open because you're right. I believe some of, from what we hear, uh, the contract contact tracing uh, that occurs as someone tests positive on a weekend or on Sunday is really required to schools or to send kids home for a protracted period of time because they weren't able to trace over the weekend. So the fact that you guys are working seven days a week, I think is a real service to our school system. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, the nurses, I'm tired. Are doing lots of that. Um, Dr. Lutz's sage comment a couple of weeks ago was we're either going to have to close the schools or close the sports. Um, these are <laughs> your comment, Jim, about the sports and the contacts, because that's where a lot of these uh, positive cases are coming. The New Canaan Public Schools have had 17 positives so far this year, but the quarantine numbers have gone up to 50, 60, 70s when you look at it. Presently, we have, um, I think there was one positive this week at Sachs, one at West. Uh, one teacher at West, and wow. they've done the appropriate hard work with uh, with the quarantine and being on the phone and scoping this all out. Um, in terms of hospital information, FYI, that uh, you know, there's been a surge in all the hospitals. Norwalk has 20 something uh, patients with COVID now, and in June and July there were zero to one, and the same with Stanford. They've gone up to the high teens. Um, Norwalk Hospital has about six or seven on ventilators. Um, so the second surge is real and, um, two questions, Jen, one is, do you know if the, the, the state or new Canaan has gotten any money from FEMA, you know, cause they waived that back in February that they would be picking up the tab for all the testing. No, and they're not covering testing. So, no. um, Bill Osman submitted it last week. Um, but no, that's, that's where our, my email to the governor's office last night, you know, where, where is this going? You know, you're, you're, you're saying on these governor's calls, there's free testing available. Well, where, you know, besides the inner cities. So I am trying to work that channel, but um, no, the, the CARES Act is the most likely way to get the reimbursement for any testing up front. But like I said, with physician one for next week, um, we're just gonna have the credit card link for there and then people just pay the credit card through there, just like you would for any other service that you go to. Where it's still are these... a lot cheaper than everywhere else that you go. Next Friday, where are the, we know this week it's Saks in the high school, where do the residents go for their testing a week from? It will be in the out call tomorrow. I'm still working on finalizing it tomorrow, meeting the company there um, at the sites tomorrow, working with the PD on logistics plan, because it's gonna be um, most likely a drive up. So I'm finalizing all that. Uh, here's uh, Jen, it's, it's Penny. Um, earlier this week on one of the uh, Facebook blogs, um, there was a comment that there was going to be free nasal swabbing um, throughout the school system. It generated quite a long series of commentary uh, about if it's going to be on Friday, I'm not going to let my kid go to school on Friday because I don't want to be tested and part of it. 
and um, what it's going to result in school closing because there will you know, be identified cases. And so the fewer tests that are given, the better off they'll be because they don't want school canceled. No. Um, and so I thought there was kind of a, a whole negative. That's, that's uh, the stream, polar which... opposite of what we're trying to do. And I've been working with Dr. Luxy and his messaging. No, Good. the whole purpose of this is to prevent the schools from closing, right. you know, to find the cases, identify, isolate, and keep going. Because without knowing where all the cases are, especially with teachers and everything, you can't keep things open. I mean, just like Waveney, for example, with all the testing they've been doing for months after months after months is what's kept Waveney clean. Without testing, you can't keep control of this. And I know there's a lot of that you know, wrong information that is, sadly they hear it on a lot of news stations, but that's the polar opposite of what we're trying to do. I wouldn't be killing myself literally 24 seven if I wanted the schools to close, nor would Brian. Yeah. I yeah. mean, our lives would be a lot easier if they were closed, but we're doing the polar opposite. We realize the kids need to be in school and the value of that. And the purpose of the testing is to get that data of, okay, what do we really have going on here? You know, do we, you know, have any kind of issue and identify it now, isolate it and then keep going, especially with, you know, the holiday season coming up, a lot of people traveling, the college kids coming home. We want to make sure we have testing available for all of this that's going to be happening because the last thing on mine and Brian's agenda is closing the schools. We are the only right. school in this area that's been able to stay open. Schools. Are <coughs> well, I, I figured that, that you just might want to have a little heads up that this was going on in a yeah, whole thank you, you know, thread. And I will, um, <laughs> from from my entry to it, um, you know, try to get it to stop. Thank okay. you. But yeah. yes, we, we are going to work on the messaging, especially with the alcohol tomorrow and what Brian can send out in the schools. Perfect. Um, of the purpose of this and what the intent is. <laughs> yeah, good, there, is, good. Is the test mandatory for the public no, schools? No, no, it's all voluntary. Voluntary. Mm -hmm. And then also the testing for residents, how long is that going to go on? Is it going to go on through the holidays or? Well, for right now, they want to see how this works. So that's going to be another key in the alcohol saying, if this works well, and we have a lot of volume and they see that they have volume, they will add on extra days to it. But as a side thing that we're working on with Waveney of trying it. to do um, daily testing set up, because I don't know if anyone saw Russ's press release, they've just taken over um, or joined Wilton um, visiting nurses. So they have increased their staff over there and have the capabilities to help set up and do testing and keep it here in town. Because as we see the other, where we're sending people now in the cities, because their cases are rapidly um, going up, the lines are getting very long in Norwalk and Stanford. So we want our residents to be able to be here in town in a safe location. So it's, it's but there's a lot that goes into this, a lot of planning, a lot of logistics, you know, Money always comes up, things like that. So, but we hey, do have multiple working. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, on behalf of uh, my grandchildren and their parents in town here, thank you for all you're doing. Yeah, Mars. appreciate it so much. Fabulous, wonderful. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Yeah, that's so just to your point, though, Jen. I think um, you know this. All of these blogs and everything, if we have a message and all the blogs are sent to maybe Tucker Murphy and she can just send out a canned response to it to try to squash some of these negatives, maybe that that is something that would be appropriate for communication. So what's your thoughts okay. on that? If you want any help making graphics or anything, if that would help, I'm happy to uh, assist with that. Great, thank you. Thank you. I do yeah. have a question about the um, the statistics that go into the out call. I know there was an issue with the October 23rd out call. There were cases at SACS that were not included in it. And so we were where... we were still we were still working on the contact tracing at that point when the call was being recorded and everything. And I screwed up the instead of saying under, it was over. So 
that was an error on uh, wording, but I, the charts were all correct that I did. I just messed up. I'm human. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I understood. It's just then, you know, then same thing with like the online and people are saying, you know, yeah, question know. the veracity of the information that they're being given. Hey, Jen, weren't you a brunette when COVID started? Yeah, <laughs> I know I've <laughs> aged about 30 years already. <laughs> and hey. And according to the second wave and our state epidemiologist, the peak of this is not supposed to occur until sometime in January. So that's why we're trying to make sure we have ducks in a row of testing and things like that. Because again, the number one goal is trying to keep the schools open as long as humanly possible until the governor does whatever the governor does. All right. You, you, have to, you have to catch the pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic vectors early on, if not, then the R not factor, the number of people they infect goes up exponentially. So Jen is correct. We're, we're looking at doing testing, continue to do testing. We proposed to the town um, and we're still considering it, you know, three day or three hours a day. So like from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. So there's no large line. We get in and out, get the test results within 24 to 30 hours later and back to be able to catch those vectors so that they do not have an opportunity as they're asymptomatic and feeling fine to go infect five other people or especially right. their friends. So that's the actual philosophy theory behind it. It has worked for us um, at, uh, at Waveney in protecting our vulnerable population and, and we offered it to the town to roll that out as well. Thank you. Um, Jen, that's it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation and the work. Um, here, here. Next on the agenda is Human Services. Bethany? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, here we go. Flu clinics. They're basically, they're, they're done. We'll just take anybody if they would care to have a, I have six high dose flu shots left and about 15 regular uh, quadrivalent left. So we've done about 310 flu shots. Um, we will submit to Medicare and to the town insurance. Um, it was, that's exactly what we did last year. That was the exact same number. Food pantry, we have still continue with the average of 40 families coming in for each distribution. The holiday gift, I mean, the holiday program will consist of, we will have the fixings uh, uh, on a table for them to take, but also everyone will get a, a $25 Acme gift card to purchase their protein. And the very grateful for our largest food pantry uh, donation or, or food drive is St. Aloysius does a love thy neighbor food drive every year, and they are going to continue to do it. So we will get huge uh, inventory uh, stocking the shelves and yeah. it's just gonna take longer to put on the shelves because our volunteers, you know, we have to have less, fewer volunteers uh, doing the sorting, but we're very grateful uh, for, for St. A's and following through. The COVID outreach, we are targeting medical practices now. Uh, we're drawing up a letter letting the medical practices know the outreach that human services is here. Uh, there's mental and physical well-being that possibly we might connect people with resources should uh, you know, money be an issue or just a lack of information. So we're reaching out to those. And we also, the seniors, uh, Instacart, which is a large grocery shopping uh, online site, they have opened up a senior call in. You don't have to be computer literate to call in, sign up, get online, and you can start ordering your groceries by telephone. So they are uh, definitely seeing the disparity for the seniors and then and, and trying to get them to order online. And they're, they're, we'll see how that goes. I've sent the word out to the whole community. And honestly, the number of seniors that are requesting to have volunteers they, they, they're not reaching out again. Um, I, they're not feeling this uptick 
in COVID. And so that's a concern for human services. And so we're trying to do these other types of outreach. Uh, hopefully Instacart will give them the control and, and for doing their grocery shopping. Grant requests. Uh, I sent out last month uh, to the five grants that we normally uh, cover each year, child guidance, Meals on Wheels, things like that. They uh, are given until next December meeting. So that meeting, we will get our grants and I, I will propose those to you at that time. Uh, let me see, client care. We are receiving less phone calls, but the cases are more, they're more complicated and more steps are need, needing to be taken to get these people over to the resources necessary. So that, that's what's happening. And choices counseling, we are in the uh, Part D Medicare enrollment period right now, and it goes on until December 7th. The Lapham Community Center does the majority, but uh, I'm doing a lot of, Marcy and I are doing a lot of the uh, Department of Social Services, the Medicaid, and more of the uh, issues and renewing and uh, of their uh, qualifications for the Medicare Savings Program and Medicaid. So that's underway. Uh, things are humming, uh, but we would like to see an uptick in the seniors being a little more serious about staying away from the community uh, as this uh, transmission does increase. And um, we're just trying to find ways to do outreach. So if anyone has any suggestions, happy to listen. What, what is the uh, recommendation about people who are older ages or otherwise vulnerable um, going to stores and shopping? Let's even though they wear masks. Uh, my neighbor who's uh, in her 60s went to Stu Leonard's on Saturday because she thought it was a good thing to do. And she said it was just jammed um, with people with masks. Uh, is that wise or is that something that we shouldn't be doing now? I, and I, I, I don't know if anybody has a definitive answer, but I'm certainly uh, having doubts about it. Jen? Well, I, I think again, it's all, you know, the risk people are willing to take and whether you really need to go or not and what time you go. Because there are some times where the stores are a lot less dense, where you can easily navigate around the store. I wouldn't go out to a Costco on a Saturday if I was a senior. I mean, that's just not the greatest idea. But um, yeah, I mean, or the best thing is, like I said, use or Bethany's saying is use services that are available, especially if you're vulnerable, to do some of those things for you if possible. Order online, order delivery, things like that. Because, you know, there are a few handful of cases you get here and there that swear they haven't been anywhere except to X, Y, and Z store. So you just don't really know. And depends also too, what kind of mask you have on, how good the mask is, if you're wearing it correctly, how long, the exposure, things like that. Tom, I, th I think the risk profile has a lot to do with comorbidities as well. If you have diabetes, if you have congestive heart failure, Right. You're in relatively good shape, things of that nature. Uh, but Bethany sent out a really nice link of, uh, I think was very inexpensive as I remember it, Bethany, like $99 a year or something. And I, I just think that needs to be more promoted uh, to seniors as, a, as an option for buying their groceries for them and then delivering them to them. So um, again, it, to me, it has more to do from our research and our patients uh, with the severity of the comorbidity or or the secondary complications that a, a senior may have. And I think just psychologically, I, I think um, all of us across the age band, we've acclimated, so to speak, to COVID. So we think, oh, well, a lot of these people, um, oh, I've been healthy so far, so I guess I'm doing the right thing. And I, but I continue to go to the grocery store. And I mean, there is a sense of security in terms of they've made it through the first wave. So I just, um, the second wave, I, I, 
I would love to have a little more prevention and I would love them to get signed up. The Instacart, even if you don't wanna pay the $99 a year, it's $3.99 that they add to the cart for the delivery. It's very minimal, but I've also said that if someone does, if a monetary uh, funds are, are an issue to please contact human services, um, we are more than happy to get somebody uh, comfortable with the system because I just think the prevention, I, the wave I, if January, if it hits, uh, like it's going to. Bethany, is that on the uh, website at all for people to access? Um, it's on the town website? Yeah. No. It's not. Should we put it on? Sure. Yeah. I'll talk to IT. Yeah. You know, the viral penetration in the community is not what it was last February, March, April. So people aren't as sensitized, but there is an upsweep and they're, they're, they are aware of it. So I think to Tom's point, just being as conservative and as cautious as you can is the wise thing because you just don't know. And if the predictions that we're going to peak on an upward trend until the end of January, it's just gonna get worse instead of better. So picking your times and places and being protected when you go is wise. The other thing is Bethany's not, you're not getting the request for the volunteers services as of yet, correct? I mean, uh, like we yeah, back yeah. in March and April. Yeah, volunteers are uh, lessening as well. Now, some of them are, con are continuing with their seniors and they don't wanna take on another senior, I mean, which is fine. Um, but people, you know, the kids are back in school, um, people are tired, and I think they're feeling overwhelmed. So our volunteer base is less as well. So this is why the Instacart, if we can get them acclimated to that process, if it hits, you know, and there is a surge um, of having to get your, you know, stay home, get your groceries on your own, they're already, they're already uh, in, in the capacity of getting their food and not worrying about it. But you know, it's it's hard to, it's it's fear that's going to get them to. And and maybe you can give Kevin, you know, some language he can include in his out call as well. Maybe that yeah. that would be helpful. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. So thank you. So yeah, that's it. That's what's happening in human services. Okay. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, adult and senior services, Marcy. Good morning. Um, as Bethany said, we are continuing to call our vulnerable population list um, and reminding them that we are here and reminding them that, you know, if they are concerned about grocery shopping, etc, we are available to help them um, with that. We are also uh, working on a contact list for all the medical offices to remind them of our, you know, human services and our um, ability to find support for some of their patients if they're concerned. Um, we are also working with staying put uh, to do wellness checks on some of the residents that they are concerned about, their members that are not on our vulnerable population list. Um, Nick has been great about calling when she feels like there's something to be concerned about, and I have been doing some follow-up phone calls on those members. Um, we are working on our energy assistance program. I've completed 27 applications so far. Um, and we have managed to uh, help a resident who was without a furnace. He is getting a new furnace on Friday, tomorrow. Wow. Um, a lot of phone calls and a lot of begging, but we, we managed to find that uh, for him. And uh, last but not least, Bethany and I have been working with a complex case uh, and we are working very hard on getting uh, this resident the care and uh, the care that she needs in a safer environment. Um, and we've been working with protective services on that. Uh, and that is it on my, on my end. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Um, Jackie, Youth and Family Services. Yeah, um, uh, same as Marcy, working on the fuel assistance applications. Um, we do it with the, uh, I know the acronym, but I always screw up the, um, organization that's in Norwalk, Danbury, and Stanford. Um, it's been a little tricky this year. I think we're looking at like a month that they're getting back to us and certifying these applications. So just think of that. That's a long time for people to wait. I think I have someone that's, it'll be over a month. Um, and we're checking back with the people that I think they've had some change in staff over there. 
Um, so that's been tricky, but you know, clients are constantly checking back with us. Um, and we have a portal where we can see the information, but it's just not always uploaded. So that's been challenging, but we're, we're managing. I think I've had two families where they've either been out of work and they need it immediately. And one, I think it was a recent job loss. Um, so I sent them directly to them because they're the certifiers. So I don't want a month hold up on my end. So I've had to say, you know, look, you've got to make the appointment directly with them. And I think they can go to Stanford, which isn't, you know, terrible. Um, and then the other um, stuff where I don't want to jump ahead to the holidays, but it, yesterday we generated a list. We have about, it's 108 kids from 12th grade and under that will be receiving holiday gift cards from us. So um, it's a pretty big list. Um, I think that's comprised of about 50 families um, that have those kids. So, uh, but it's just our, in past years, last year we had all those families in our offices picking from gifts, but just for with COVID, it, we can't have those people congregating. So um, gift cards are the safest way that we can go about that. Um, so we'll get those lists uh, out to people. We're giving them a choice on where they'd wanna, um, with a few stores that they could pick from for those gift cards. Um, and then obviously we'll rely on donations. I, I had one yoga, a Kaya yoga here in New Canaan um, offered a, do you know see if some of their um, clients would want to um, give some of those gift cards? So that's great. I think there were other businesses as well. Um, and then every year our fire department has a fund that they offer Christmas trees to our family. So we're doing twelve Christmas trees for families, and we tend to pick the families that have you know the neediest of situations. So um, you know that's what we're doing. So we're happy about that, and hopefully we'll get those in the next couple of weeks. Um, the other things, I, if I have four families right now that are in need of affordable housing. And if anyone's looked or in the real estate business or have contacts, I mean, there is nothing, like nothing for an affordable rate. I mean, I'm talking not even like Bridgeport might be the closest area that someone might be able to find something for, you know, $2,000, which may be like a one bedroom. So obviously a family can't um, do that. I also have a young adult that's in need of housing. Um, but like I said, we're just trying to plug away and, and see where we can get those people referred. But it's just, you know, a really housing has always been an issue, but it's, I, it's even worse now. Um, and I don't, I think it'll continue to be worse. Um, and then the other, um, Marcy was mentioning, you know, just some challenging families. I won't get into what the issues are, but just a lot of challenging situations that every day we just navigate and try to find the right referrals um, for the families and the school's been wonderful. Um, I had a, a Zoom with them. It was all the social workers and Susan Bliss, I believe that was like a week ago. And they have a couple of people filling in for some people that have taken a leave this year um, in those positions. So it's great for them to know who I am. Um, they also can access the Touch a Life Fund um, for their families. Um, the nice thing about that is they can access it without doing a financial assessment or questions asked, whereas we have to gather all that info from the families. So it's nice for them, you know, if they can pay an electric bill or something like that quickly without the family having to submit all the documents to us. Um, that's a great, you know, great resource. Um, and the other thing is, I, I'm sure all of you have seen, but um, in Connecticut alone, uh, since 2020, we've had seven youth that have committed suicide or died by suicide, but four in October alone. Um, and I know that there was one in Wilton. I believe there's one in Stanford. Ingrid Gillespie was trying to get me the numbers of those other two and just what communities. Um, Pool does have an organized sort of plan on how they would respond. And they have involved me before when they've had situations with parents that have died by suicide to uh, get in touch with those families, you know, and see if they needed, and maybe they don't talk to me right away during the grief, but I hear from them maybe after the fact. Um, but I just think, you know, in our community, it would be important for us to have kind of like an organized response or to let people know that we can get involved, other people in the community can. I know the churches would be willing as well um, and obviously are involved. Um, but I, and the, and the state of Connecticut put away, I think it's 3.5 million, which, you know, in retrospect, isn't a lot of money, but for a suicide effort to organize our communities. So I think it's great. Any money 
is great to get us, you know, sort of talking about this. This isn't a, you know, situation that's going away. These numbers keep rising. So it's pretty scary. Um, I think that any, any of the affordable housing um, people over the age of 65 at all, any of these seniors looking for housing? No, I work with anyone that has, so no, that my four families, no. <laughs> I'll be with kids in the school system and they're not over 65. Okay, and the second is, is this related to the economy at all? Were these individuals fired, laid off, furloughed or? I had one, one is an issue of like safety. So that's all I'll mention there. It's a, it's a safety issue. Um, and then the other is, um, the other are just like multifamily homes being sold by landlords. And I don't know what that reason is. Maybe COVID has affected them. They're thinking, let me sell now. And there's multiple. So there's four families living in both of those homes. Um, some of them have been told their rent is going to raise, you know, once the new owner you know, buys it. So that obviously isn't feasible for them. Um, and of course, they all want to stay with their kids being educated here. I think all of them have lived in town pretty much the majority of their kids, you know, education. So that's a tricky thing um, for them. So yeah, so that's the situation with those. But it's like all common, like, it was like in a week's time. I'm like, this is really, really difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the New York exodus making the values more valuable right. in, uh, in Fairfield County, like Nassau and wherever else that's uh, diminishing the, the options, which is unfortunate. People want to capitalize on the opportunity, so they're selling the multifamily dwellings. So I, I just want to give, you know, a thanks to uh, Jackie and Marcy. I, it's just incredible. The, these cases, you know, they're, they're, they're getting very deep and, and complicated, and I, they're just doing a great job. So please, uh, just Thank you. being reassured really to the town that we are taking, you know, we're trying to help and connect with resources. And um, it's, it's just with what's going on, it's just making it more difficult, but we're working on it and they're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. And that's great to hear too. Anything else, Jackie, you? No, I mean, I'm okay. sure there is, but anyone, and obviously anyone can contact me at any point. Um, I know Alyssa, not to shout out, um, but she's been involved with our New Canaan Abuse Prevention Partnership, which is great. We love having her. She's connected to a lot of great people. I definitely want to use her if I need any help with writing or, I heard you said graphics before, so I definitely might have some ideas, so I'll be in touch with you offline. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next uh, commission, any reports? Uh, Russ, the, the notice did go out about uh, Waveney and the uh, Western Connecticut Visiting Nurses Association and the, the merger projected. Um, it's, it's, that's big. Would you want to briefly give us a summary comment on it? Sure. Um, we fought with the uh, DPH for a change of ownership uh, so that um, uh, the Visiting Nurse Hospice of Fairfield County uh, which uh, handles about 1,900 to 2,000 um, uh, patients' cases per year. So that is doubling our home care capacity, uh, which is a great thing, a great organization. It brings hospice care services to um, our full continuum. So that was filed with the DPH on Monday. Press release went out uh, this morning. Um, we're trying to get everything uh, accomplished on the change of ownership by the end of this calendar year, and then we'll be working on the full merger for the two home care divisions uh, to be coming together. So we're really excited. It brings additional capacity to some of the testing that we're working with the town on, um, but also helps to uh, support Jen and the, the school system anytime that they, uh, that they need it. So we're very excited about it. Their offices uh, are in Wilton um, on Route 7, and um, so more to come. So all great, all good things, two great organizations, and um, uh, we're very blessed. So thank you. Great. Congratulations. Thank you, you know, they're all special callings, but uh, none more so than hospice. Um, let's see. All right, old business. Uh, oh, okay. uh, before you go, go forth on, uh, I want to talk about the seniors and the COVID coping task force that I have joined. And when we were talking about seniors before, I'm basically, there's a uh, 
a group that Jackie has been part of and is that has now been divided into three pieces that are three different uh, functioning committees. Uh, Jackie is on the uh, resource group and I'm now on the research group uh, working with uh, Ingrid Gillespie and Silver Hill, et cetera, et cetera. But the point of this is that it's also an opportunity to represent seniors on that, on that planning group. Uh, secondly, uh, one of the things that is in place already is the Let's Talk About It program, which is focused primarily as a, a youth program. We're looking at how we could expand that franchise into uh, to seniors and general families. Uh, just a uh, FYI. So we are represented there now, both on staff and the commission. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, old business, you're back on, Jim. Telemental project. It's uh, fantastic what you've done. Lots of compliments. I did watch the uh, social connection by Dr. Stephanie Palmino. Um, it was fantastic. Um, just uh, the whole series looks good. Um, how, how are we doing with promotion? And do you have any idea of the people that are attending this or participating? We, uh, the answer to your last question is we're trying, uh, Bob Dorn and I are trying to get a count uh, from YouTube, which is usually part of the service, but we haven't been able to uh, establish what that is so far. What we know is most of the people that are watching the series uh, programs are watching it on YouTube where it's always available versus uh, linking to the three times a day that it's on uh, channel 79. And I just uh, want to add yeah. that this Susan uh, Palomino, I've had a number of telehealth clients uh, ask me for the, they wanted the PowerPoint presentation she gave, it was excellent. I mean, the resources and the lists that she gave in terms of self-help and tools, um, phenomenal. So it, it even, you know, extended into a, a great resource. Right, great. Yeah, the, uh, the teaching staff, if you will, is really absolutely fantastic. We're gonna get a, a small glimpse of, of the new program that starts uh, tomorrow in a minute. But I just wanna say the other thing that's been helpful in the marketing part is that uh, Keith Ritchie, who's the president of the men's club, which is 400 senior men, uh, of which about 70 to 80 seem to be attending the Zooms on a weekly basis. Uh, Keith will has provided me three to four minutes for each meeting to both introduce the new program and talk about, we had Steve Johnson, who's our demonstrator, senior everyman, as it were, talking about uh, how to deal with social connectivity, for instance. And uh, so we, we showed the uh, three minutes of Steve's uh, demonstration, as it were, of the program this last week. Uh, and tomorrow we're showing the thing that I'm gonna show you in a minute uh, as the start of the, four, of the third uh, program in the series of six called the Body and Mind Connection. So we are making some progress we also have uh, linked into AARP in Hartford on a state basis, the uh, SWERPA group, which is a planning group, and the SWACA group, which is a mostly Fairfield County group that are distributing the program. So we're, uh, we're coming along, not probably uh, would hope that we could reach a lot more people, but we're doing the best we can. Anyway, I want to show you the, uh, what it looks like when the program starts, if we can tee up our, uh, our video. Marcy, go for it. Yay, it's working. I'm not sure if I have to be unmuted. Or not. Welcome to our third episode of Navigating Today's Normal, The Connected Mind and Body. Today, Dr. Murray Lowe is going to show you the major connections between the healthy body and the healthy mind. Dr. Lowe is going to give you the medical evidence of why maintaining a healthy body for maintaining a healthy mind is critical. 
sustaining well-being. Did we just lose? Murray is a doctor of education in applied physiology and is nationally recognized. He has received the National L. Kent Smith Award for his significant and unique professional contributions, having had a major impact on the delivery of cardiovascular rehabilitation. He has served as the president of the American Association for Cardiac and Pulmonary Rehabilitation. From an early career as a professor at York College, CCNY, he recently retired after 30 years as director of the Tully Center for Cardiac Rehabilitation at Stanford Hospital. In his retirement, he currently serves as the director for Burke Rehabilitation Hospital Cardiac Program. First, I want to thank you for inviting me here to present the, the New Canaan community and to talk about my passion, which is physical activity, exercise, and fitness. So today we'll talk about uh, exercise as medicine, uh, the body-mind connection. I think we've got a really uh, worsening situation in our country. In the past 100 years, we've learned to sit more and move less. And that has really been uh, quite painful to our health and also to our minds. Uh, more so now, especially uh, with the pandemic that we're all dealing with. Um, you see all these remote controls on these slides. And I think that's an indication that we're sitting even more as people are afraid to move, to go outside, to go back to their physical activities, to their exercise programs. So I'd like to share with you today a little bit about some research that we have and perhaps get you to rethink your current levels of physical activity. And the first question we have is, are you sitting too much? And my guess is for many people, the answer is yes. And you see that kind of uh, skeleton and bones on that chair. And I think that's dangerous for all of us. The more we sit, uh, the greater is the chance of additional health risks. So uh, I would suggest, uh, again, Murray, I've had Murray uh, to the men's club in the last three or four years twice, and he's very popular because he takes a subject as to why you should be working out more and, and physically moving in any form. Uh, and now it connects it to why if you don't keep moving, your brain gets uh, gets weakened also. So uh, anyway, I recommend it to everybody. and. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. And Health and Human Services doing their part to market mind and body. The letter that uh, Bethany and Marcy and Jackie alluded to is going out to physicians. We are we will be promoting the uh, mind body series. Um, having watched it, it's it's good for everyone, not only seniors but juniors and uh, and physicians too. And not that the physicians may not know this at some point in time, but a refresher course and would be would be good with many important aspects. And the person that spoke with Dr. Stephanie um, Paul Paul Mino, I mean, um, was um, you know she had uh, she's a therapist for the geriatric group too, and that's uh, it was very important and informative. Anyway, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the holiday programs, uh, Thanksgiving. Let's see, we're gonna have meals that we will be delivering, 10 meals to seniors, right? So um, I'm, vol I'm volunteering to do that. And uh, anyone else can step up and deliver a meal if there's Right, Bethany, that's what we have, 10. Uh, if you want to send me, Marcy or myself, you know, just an email saying if you can deliver, it's going to be the day before Thanksgiving, if you're in town, um, what is that, the 23rd? It's Wednesday, um, obviously. And the meals are from the fire department, have been donated through Walter Stewart's. And so we have 10 that will be going to someone who is homebound and uh, is very appreciative of, of this. So let us know if you are available. It would probably be, what Marcy, in the afternoon. We'd probably, like afternoon sometime, um, what's best for your schedule, we'll be picking them up around one o'clock and then 
we'll go from there. So let me know. If you, can, you can put me down for one or two or if however many, what the balance is, I'm happy to do it. Okay, Russ, we got Russ and we've got- Yeah, and include me because uh, the other thing is we're just putting these at the door. We're not going inside, correct? Yeah. Sadly, it's contact-free delivery. Yeah. Okay, uh, sign up. Okay, very good. So yeah, it will be contact-free and I'll just figure out how many how many deliverers and how many meals and we'll get you going. It won't take long at all. Right. So we also have a gift bag for um, Christmas, New Year's that we'll be delivering. This is gonna be uh, bigger numbers, about 120 or so, right, Bethany? Yeah, Marcy, you wanna uh, go? We're, we're looking for volunteers for that too. I am one. Um, hey, Bethany, just know that the volunteer fire department's always been super helpful with me with delivery, so don't feel shy to reach out to them. Okay, we, um, let me explain a little bit. We have um, very kind, these are resources in New Canaan. So what's going in this bag, uh, number one, uh, I have to thank Alicia. Uh, she's the NCL organizer for the, the chapter is going to donate 120 like six inch artificial wreaths that have been decorated. And these will go into the bag. And surrounding that are also the resources in New Canaan um, that are going to be on. The fire marshal is donating, um, or they're giving a brochure on fire and CO2 safety. The Get About has, had, uh, making a, has a pen with their name and phone number on it. Uh, Human Services, we're giving a pad of paper with our phone numbers on it. And- um, and navigate. <laughs> yeah, and then, yes, and, and also the uh, navigating to, yeah, we have enough for navigating tomorrow's, you know, buying the body that we just saw Jim promoting that. Um, a little bag of candy that's nut free, Harrison. <laughs> uh, Lapham Center, yeah, Lapham Center is giving a, a, a bookmark with a little magnifying glass on it. Um, these all have phone numbers on it of these resources. Uh, Meals on Wheels is giving their brochure. New Canaan EMS is giving a file of life that they can fill out and put on their uh, refrigerator. New Canaan Library is, is also giving a bookmark. Uh, New Canaan Police are doing a scam awareness brochure and Staying Put is doing a brochure and Wave and Eat Life Care is doing a holiday card with uh, local resource phone numbers on it of all the places that, plus a few more that are on in this gift bag. So it's just, and at the end, we're gonna put happy holidays from human services and other resources in New Canaan. We're all here for you. So it's a resource bag. And um, this list that we have, I have 120 people. This is our vulnerable population risk. People that, have, that we are calling each month and they have uh, requested you know, an interest in, in keeping in touch and just uh, decreasing their isolation issues. So that's where we're at. If you know right. of anybody that you want it to be on, please let me know. Uh, but these are definitely 120 people that we are in touch with, in touch with on a monthly basis. So B Bethany, we can, um, you know, I can give a staff and a vehicle to deliveries. So if whenever you get to whatever point of, of volunteers, we'll take the rest for you. Right. Yeah, well, what we've done in the past, have been teams delivering Christmas gifts, whatever. Um, this year, because of COVID, we're not going to have teams. Sorry, Jim. Um, <laughs> we're just going to do this individually, and whoever wants to volunteer is free to, and we will have, you know, we'll, our backups will be fire department or Russ's group or whatever. Uh, hopefully, we have enough to do this. I'm, yeah, I have, I have some free time. Bags are very light um, and they're, they're decorative and it's just happy. Um, what else? I don't know, Alicia, we'll talk. I don't know if the NCL, if there's any deliveries involved, but. We, I mean, we can help it with deliveries too, if you want, but yeah, but we've committed to do all 125 and they're, I think they're made cute. That's so great. So once right. again, community effort, uh, everybody's pulling together and uh, I absolutely, if there's anybody else you want to be, you don't have to be on the vulnerable population list um, and, and we can make up a few more bags if needed. So just let us know. It's a very feel good thing. 
Um, I was um, at our board meeting for the League of Women Voters on Monday evening, and we usually do a holiday sort of lunch um, right before the holidays. And we were trying to think of what we could do that would still have that feeling of fellowship, but be COVID safe. And so we were thinking um, it would be awesome if we could link up with you guys and see what the needs are and what you would like. So if there's some something else you need help with in terms of the, the baskets or um, anything else, we'd love to be at. Sounds great. Marcy, maybe Marcy. Uh, so Lisa, Alan, that, that was, it was schoolhouse. It wasn't health and human services. Oh, at first we were talking about how um, we were talking about last month about poinsettias and how they're expensive. And so that's how the conversation started. No, I, I, my contact was with Schoolhouse, but oh, but, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely we'll be in touch. We'll work it out. Thanks. Oh, great. Thank you. No, it's great. The outreach is just the more the better. So we appreciate it. A new business um, commission members and terms. So the, the term ends next month. Uh, the, so the first selectman, Kevin Moynihan, uh, will have a call for our meeting at which time um, he will appoint chairperson, um, secretary, et cetera. Um, the, the, the bylaws read as though the, you know, it's, it's there's everyone's appointed for a three-year term and uh, and Alyssa even though you've only been here two months and it's been great having you um your term is your term is up in December so obviously we want you to continue and have a full-fledged term and um Alicia you you've been much too valuable to us and uh, but your term is up too and hopefully you would want to continue um my term is up too um so they will be you know, reappointments and we will continue into the new term as of December after that meeting. Um, the late addition to our new business agenda is Lance Miner, who's going to discuss our alcohol substance abuse notification. It's a traditional pre-holiday phenomenon. Lance, are you? I am ready. Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, speaking of alcohol and uh, drug addiction, is the Ram Council is having their fourth gala a week from today from 7 to 8. And I have the codes if you want to get into that gala, I can give those to you. And then number two, I've uh, contacted the New Canaan Advertiser, and they're willing again to uh, run our public service ads. And if we could show those four ads right now. That would be great. This is number one. We'd like to run this uh, uh, in color on the 3rd of December. And the second one. Second one will be on the 14th. Excuse me, the 10th. Third one on the 17th. This seems to be the one that gets the most attention because it lets you know for your weight how much you can drink without getting a DUI. <laughs> Finally, conclude on uh, Merry Christmas, Christmas Eve, uh, the 24th, uh, to take the three questions. Number four, please. I don't think, oh, there I did. There, I didn't think I got there it. We can you see number, it? Number four is. Uh, if you answer uh, any one of those questions, you might have a problem. And if you answer three, uh, we'll see you in Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. <laughs> anyway, so those are the uh, four public service messages. And we'll have the, uh, as I said, they'll we'll do this for $250. That's, they're charging us for color. And uh, so we, uh, and the eight new names of all the commission measures. Um, members will be on the public service message. So that's uh, what we'd like to do. Thanks. Thank you for doing that, Lance. Um, on item number two, it is the old commission. Can we change the names to the new commission or the present commission? Well, I was going to, that's what I've got this right here. This is the, uh, 
even though you've got three that will not really officially be there, right, in December? Uh, uh, they'll, they'll all be reappointed, I think. That's okay. Fair. If they're not, we'll just we'll find out. Uh, yeah, just just if you can just put the present uh, commission members on it. Yep. Okay, I've got it. That'll be here. great. So we're all set. Yes. Yeah, Enza can help you with that if you need it. Right. No, she already has. Thanks. And also, we will put that um, once the uh, graphics are done. Then Lance is going to send him over to us, and we'll try to get him on uh, New Canaanite patch you know we'll see great right. yeah okay thank you right. thank you everyone i think we've come may i have a motion to adjourn so move second all those in favor yay <laughs> okay thank you again for attending our next meeting zoom will be on uh, december 3rd same time 8 45 thursday Terrific. Very safe and healthy. Harrison and Marcy, yeah. can you stay on for a second? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Beth, Bethany, don't forget to reach out. I mean, we're happy to, you know, put together a delivery team with our with our vehicle. Okay. There are going to be a lot of them. So I thank you. Got your name down. Thanks, everybody. Love Great. It. Thank you.